I'm, I'm happy to uh, present this conversation on the topic of how to harmonize digital media and intangible heritage and sustainable tourism. I, I think I will uh, sort of bridge the, the gap between digital technologies used in order to preserve and document heritage on the one side, which is the main topic of the AOMIT conference, and on the other side, how to leverage on such digital assets in order to promote heritage and tourism and to support it, which is the topic of this, of this workshop. The, so I will uh, present the topic of presentation of heritage, which is mentioned, for instance, in the UNESCO Convention of 1972, even if the main topic there is preservation and conservation. I will provide a brief uh, outline of how digital technologies can be used within heritage tourism, and I will continue presenting two cases which I believe could help uh, understanding the differences uh, and the connections between the two, the two areas. Uh, those cases are also closely connected with the very topic of this year, uh, World Tourism Day, which is tourism and rural development, uh, because both have a lot to do with rural communities. So first of all, the connection between documentation and communication. So on the one side, uh, we need really to be grateful uh, to all the colleagues who are working extensively to ensure top quality digitization of cultural heritage. This is for archiving purposes, for restoration purposes, so all those activities, and also in some cases for substitution, in the cases in which the heritage might be destroyed, um, and so the only uh, assets we, we could have are 3D um, representations of, of the heritage. But if we think of tourism, we need to repurpose such uh, assets in order to make them meaningful and useful within the tourism narratives and tourism storytelling. And so here it's very important for instance to understand that from the viewpoint of digital heritage, uh, the more the better. So on the one side we really strive to digitize as many uh, heritage uh, objects as possible and with the highest quality uh, possible. But if we think of tourism communication on the other side, for instance, I might decide to use lower quality images, but making sure that even people with low connections to the internet, they can uh, receive them without losing their passions and maybe clicking and visiting another place. Or from the archiving viewpoint, we want to uh, archive as many objects as possible. From the communication viewpoint, we need to select those items which are more suitable or most suitable uh, to present uh, a, a place or a destination. So tourists or prospects, they do not have time to go and browse among a hundred or a thousand of images, videos, or other digital assets, but they need to be presented with a few ones, but the right ones in order to inspire them or to help them better understanding uh, a place and uh, its, its heritage. In particular, it's very important in the field of tourism to tell stories. Of course, they should be, uh, from a scientific viewpoint, uh, very well rooted and uh, scientifically sound stories, but still engaging uh, 
uh, stories uh, and they want to play games. So uh, gamification here is very relevant. So thanks to digital technology, we can enrich the experience of travelers uh, and ensure that they can really make the best out of uh, their tourism activities. So let's, uh, let's uh, watch a, a very short video, it's 90 seconds, which presents how digital technologies uh, might be leveraged in order to support heritage tourism. Recently, information and communication technologies are everywhere with the diffusion of smartphones and the consequent experience and expectation of being always on. But how can this enhance heritage and sustainable tourism? Well, it's as simple as A, B, C, D, E. They enlarge access, providing quality information about heritage places and support for those who want to visit them. E-tourism enriches their experiences with augmented reality, photos, videos, informal learning and gamification. ICTs connect locals, visitors and the heritage, for instance through digital storytelling or awareness campaigns. They help disintermediate relationships between prospects and travellers on the one side and tourism hospitality players on the other ensuring that local communities can really benefit and that tourism is sustainable. Finally, ICTs can educate tourism operators in the field with the flexibility of e-learning, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. In these ways, ICTs can be so important to promote sustainable tourism and heritage. To find out more, go to our website. Okay, so let's go to the two uh, cases I want us to outline here. One is the case of eyewear batik. So batik is a, is a textile heritage in Indonesia which has been enlisted under the uh, UNESCO 2003 Convention on Intangible Cultural Heritage. And for intangible cultural heritage, digital technologies are fantastic because they can document uh, practices uh, and uh, uh, beliefs and uh, oral histories, etc. So we have um, produced, in collaboration with uh, many uh, cultural uh, bodies in Indonesia and here in Switzerland, a website and a mobile app which uh, cover this incredible uh, and uh, huge uh, heritage. Uh, and this is highly relevant uh, for cultural sustainability. Many times we think mostly of ecological sustainability, but uh, it's very important that visitors do understand the local culture and do respect it uh, uh, behaving in a more responsible way while interacting, for instance, with, with locals. And this is particularly relevant, for instance, for uh, the... Uh, people living in rural areas. Uh, and digital technologies can help connecting objects, so um, the uh, batik textile, uh, their meaning, so it's not just, for instance, uh, a shirt, but uh, it has a history, the motives uh, have a philosophy behind them, uh, rich uh, in, uh, in meanings, practices, uh, so why people are dressing that way um, in order to communicate what, etc., etc., and also places, uh, because, for instance, in Indonesia, every region, every place has its own historical batik motives. Uh, and so, for instance, let's see um, an, uh, an example. So this is the, in the website. Uh, we might uh, go to, for instance, Central Java in the region, um, and the website is on the one side uh, presenting uh, the Batik uh, tradition in Central Java, uh, its history, but then present all the motives with their meanings uh, and uh, the um, uh, symbolism, uh, and then it's, uh, it connects with the villages or connected with rural tourism as well 
and the journeys, the travels, the places you can you can visit you can visit be. Uh, so this is of the utmost importance here are uh, the partners uh, uh, which have developed uh, the project. So, and we have developed it uh, not only for international visitors in the English language, but also in, in the Indonesian language, in order to promote the Batik uh, heritage also uh, with locals, especially the young generations. And that's very important again, uh, to make something sustainable, it's important that the new generations, uh, they um, promote and sustain it. So uh, it's uh, of the utmost importance to involve the young generation. Uh, the second project I, I want to present is the case of uh, Machu Picchu seen through the eyes of Fernando Astete. Fernando uh, Astete has been the director of the Machu Picchu Archaeological Park uh, for 35 years and only recently retired. Um, and together with uh, the UNESCO Chair at the University of Genova or Genoa in Italy, and again other partners, uh, uh, cultural partners in Peru, uh, we have on the one side digitized uh, and we are still digitizing uh, uh, Fernando's uh, archive of the diapositives, uh, are several hundreds. Um, and on the other side, we have prepared and developed a website which tells the stories behind such, such pictures. So as you can see here, we have exactly those two elements. On the one side, we need to have high quality digital uh, materials, and this has been the goal of the first project. Um, and so it's a, a specialized database, archive, digital archive, hosted by our Faculty of Architecture. Um, and uh, also the um, images are stored there in the digital format, but also the physical diapositives are stored there under the best uh, environmental conditions of humidity, temperature, etc. Uh, all those images are made accessible to all experts with the needed metadata under the Creative Commons license, so making sure that people want to access and reuse such materials under certain conditions they uh, are enabled to do so. The second project is uh, more focused on tourism, um, and yeah, just so start uh, with the uh, URL address. So the first, uh, the previous project has this very strange and hard to remember address, but if you are an expert or a specialist or a researcher, you will find it. It's not a problem. For the other projects, for uh, lay people, we needed a very memorable uh, website name, so this Machu Picchu. Uh, dot Hungary, so it's the national top-level domain of Hungary, uh, which altogether makes Machu Picchu. Uh, we selected just the, some of those uh, images which could be connected with storytelling. So it's not only the digital asset, but it's the story behind it, is the theme or the topic, uh, and of course uh, sustainability was uh, and is one of the most important stories, uh, as you know, Machu Picchu um, has been visited by so many people per day and recently uh, the Peruvian government had to, to change the rules in order to ensure that um, the number of visitors wouldn't exceed what the, uh, the site can, uh, can sustain. Uh, in different languages, so far the the website is only in English, but we have already prepared the Spanish version of it and uh, um, the Quechua, so the local language version uh, of it is under preparation as well. So it's very important again to ensure that all the interested people might be reached through, the, uh, through this um, online uh, publication app. So 
this was uh, my message. So on the one side, we need to have fantastic digital assets. On the other side, we need to repurpose and reuse them uh, or enact them, if you like, uh, in the field of tourism and heritage tourism in order to make it fully understandable and accessible by uh, tourists or, or prospects. Um, and then I presented two projects, the Iwerbatik one and the Machu Picchu one, where we try to combine those two, those two elements uh, in, uh, in a way that uh, makes fully sense for the field of digital technologies and heritage tourism. Thank you so much for your attention.